God, blessings, blessings to the great people of God. Come on in, come on in. Good evening, good evening. I hope you had a wonderful day. Hallelujah. Come in, come in, come in. Good evening, the great Pastor Jackson Moore. Sister Nikki, how you doing tonight? Sister Harrison, how you doing tonight? Bless you, bless you. Great woman of God, Claudette Hope, how you doing? Bless you, bless you. Bless you, bless you. Come on in, come on in. Come on. Press like and share tonight. I believe God is giving us another word tonight. My beautiful mother, how you doing? Amen. Bless you. Come in. Hallelujah. A great day to be alive. Great day to be alive. I woke up this morning and giving God the glory to give Him the praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hello, hello, the great people of God. To all our new guests, how y'all doing tonight? Thank y'all for joining us. I see new names popping up. Amen. Bless you. Bless you, woman of God. Amen. Atlanta's in the house. Amen. Bless you. Bless you. I'm going to wait another couple of minutes here, then we're going to get started tonight. Amen. Amen. Don't forget to start your watch parties. Some of you all start a watch party so we can we can just push this word out. The more many people can to get this word out tonight. Bless you. Come in, come in, come in. Call somebody, text somebody, and tell them Pastor E is on the live feed tonight. And I believe tonight we're going to believe God. I believe tonight that we're going to connect with God in some way. I don't know about y'all. I'm in expectation. Amen. God spoke to me earlier this morning. He said it's time to go from expectation to experience. It's time for us to start experiencing the things of God, not just talking about it. Again, come in, come in, start your watch parties, and we're going to get started here. Hallelujah. My cousin, good to see you. Maxie, my cousin, amen. Bless you, I love you. I haven't saw you in a minute. we got to get together, amen. Anderson, good seeing you tonight. Bless you. Bless you. One more minute, we're going to get started. How are you doing tonight? Sandra, how are you doing tonight? Right, how you doing tonight? Bless you. Yes, it's my worship there. All I want is you. Pastor, Pastor William Freelo and First Lady Freelo, bless you tonight. Love you so much. Sister Valerie, how you doing tonight? Can you imagine how that sounds to the Father? Bless you, bless you. Bless the people of God tonight. It's so good having you tonight for Bible study tonight and to all of our guests. I, I'm so delighted that you have taken time out of your busy schedules. There's so many pastors online now that you could have probably turned to any 
Facebook page and found a pastor to listen to tonight. So I'm so glad for our new guest to be joining us. And P.O.P., I'm glad that we're here one more time. And I'm telling you, this is the day that the Lord has made. Uh, it's not just a cliche. We've got to rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, tonight, you know, God has been speaking to me. I, I was telling you earlier this morning, I, I was out having my morning walk this morning, and God began to speak to me about going from expectation to experiencing me. Uh, it's time for us to, we've been talking about all the wonderful things that we're expecting God to do, but I do believe that there's a time where we've got to start experiencing that. I don't want to just die saying I was expecting it. I'm expecting to see it. And I, I'm telling you some of the things that God has promised me. Uh, I can't speak for nobody else, but somebody can testify. Some of the things you pray for us is coming to pass. I think people need to hear that. We're not just on here talking about some glad morning when we get to heaven. Uh, God is doing some things right now on this earth. And I believe that God is looking for somebody he can show himself strong in. And I believe that we've got to position ourselves so God can show himself strong and all of us. It's, it's his good pleasure to bless us. And I'm telling you, uh, they, we used to sing this song every day when Jesus gets sweeter than the day before. And I really believe, I really mean that. I mean, every day it seems like God is doing more for me. I feel his presence even stronger. Uh, my hunger, my appetite for him is, is, is changing. I want more of him. And, and anytime you get a hunger for more of him, that means something in you is dying. It's less of you. So again, we're going to come on, on tonight. We're going to have prayer, then we're going to go right into the Word. I say this every week, I don't plan to hold you long, but I want the Holy Spirit, I've asked the Holy Spirit to teach tonight, you know. A lot of times we get up here just saying anything. I, I believe that you got to have that consecration, hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Uh, I don't want to miss God, so we got to stay in His presence. We got to keep praying. We got to keep worshiping. We got to keep studying. Uh, I don't want to miss God because sometimes we think God is over here when He's right there, you know. Uh, so again, let's make sure we clear our minds. So let's just take a moment to clear our minds. Of, you know, let's let's tell Daddy uh, God how wonderful He is, how great He is. So Father, tonight uh, I'm I'm asking you tonight. As we touch and agree tonight, I, I pray that you would give us a uh, Jesus takeover. Jesus, we're asking you to take us over. Consume us with your presence this night, Father. I pray in the name of Jesus that you would stir up the gifts that you've given all of us, God. And I just pray that, Father, our ways would always please you, God. So, Father, we, Jesus, we ask you to take over our minds we want to think like you think, God. I pray over our minds that we cast down every imagination that comes against your word, God. So, Father, create in us the right spirit. Renew the right mind within us tonight. So, Father, as we pray tonight, we know when you we pray, Father, I know you hear us, God, because your ears are listening to the righteous as we cry out. In the night, we pray for our hearts, God. If there'll be anything that's in our hearts that shouldn't be God. I ask you tonight to take it out of our hearts, God. If there'll be hurt, if there'll be residue from the past of somebody has did something ill to me, God, that it's hard to get over. I ask you tonight to purge us, God. Purge it out of our minds. But tonight, Father, I pray that you would clean up our hearts tonight. So, Father, I pray that tonight, because you said in your word, nothing but the pure in heart is going to see Jesus. Now, Father, we're not coming with words trying to uh, impress anyone. Tonight, we're just crying out for you, God. Father, you know before we even pray, you know exactly what we need. So tonight, I come in agreement in the name of Jesus. I ask you to meet every need tonight, God. And for those who are drifting away from you, because sometimes, God, things can make us lose focus of what you're doing in our lives. Sometimes we can get to a place where we know you and we love you, but we're drifting, God. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, bring us back to that place, God, that we're pleasing to you. Father, if we've got too big, if we've got too bold, if we've got too arrogant, God, if we got too high, bring us down tonight, God. Father, we want to see you, God. I don't want to do all of this, what we call church and worshiping, and then stand before you. You say you don't even know me, God. And Father, take over our lives, God. 
Not our will, God, but let your will be done in our life, God. Father, let your will be done. Father, if it's not your will, God, take it away, God. I want to be in your will, God. I want my life to be in your will. I want everything that I possess to be in your will, God. And Father, I don't want to connect with anything or anybody that's not your will. So tonight, Father, we close this prayer out tonight. We ask less of us, God, and more of you, God. When we talk, the way we live, oh, Father, I want them to see Jesus living in us, God. And Father, we pray for this world today, God. There's some hurting people in the world. We pray for the flawed family. We pray for the whole unrest of this world. I pray that this world is humbling themselves down. And we're praying. We're seeking your face. We're turning from our wicked ways, God. And I pray, Father, as we humble ourselves and we turn, God, and we get in that position, God, that you're going to bring healing to this nation, God. So help us today, God. Help us to be pleasing. Help us to be the vessels of honor that you're calling in these last and evil days, God. Now, Father, I pray that this word tonight, that the Holy Spirit will speak to us tonight, God. Give us revelation. Give us knowledge. Give us understanding. We're not talking about something, some fairy tales tonight. We're talking about life tonight, God. Father, I pray tonight, make the word come alive. It's in the name that's above every name we pray, and that name is Jesus Christ. Amen, amen. Come on, come on, give God a praise right there. Send some hearts up. Let me know you're out there. God is a good God. He's worthy to be praised. And I'm telling you, the best is yet to come. Listen, I'm looking at you dead in your face tonight. I, I can't see you physically, but spiritually, I'm telling you the best is yet to come. It ain't over till God says it's over. And some of us are allowing the situation to control us instead of us controlling the situation. How do you control the situation? You continue to believe God's word. You continue to study to show yourself approved. And you continue to praise God for what's on the way. Let me tell you something. It ain't over till God says it's over. It's not over till I win. So if you hadn't won yet, that means God is still working on you. Because when God gets through with you, it's going to be yay and amen. Man, it's going to be some praises and hallelujah. So, so tonight, I, I just want to kind of talk a little bit tonight. Uh, I want to be more practical tonight. Uh, I was reading this uh, in the Bible, and I think this is going to be a blessing tonight. Now, I want you to title uh, the message tonight, uh, A Good Man in a Bad Condition. A Good Man in a Bad Condition. Come on, somebody type that on here. A Good Man in a bad condition. And let's go to Matthew 19 chapter and let's look at 16. I'm going to skip to 20, then 21, then we'll catch the rest of it when we're closing everything out. Uh, it starts out in verse 16, Matthew 19, 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I might have eternal life? Let's go to 20. The young man said unto him, all these things have I kept from my youth up. What like it I yet? And this is what I love. And Jesus answers him. Somebody say, Jesus answer him. And Jesus said unto him, If thou will be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give it to the poor, and thou shalt have treasures in heaven, and come and follow me. Again, tonight I'm going to be talking about a good man in a bad condition. Now, I want you to listen to me. The Word of God is designed to expose our proclivities, our weaknesses, our uncertainties in life. The Word of God is designed to expose that area in our life. It's not how smart or intelligent I am. What God wants to know, can I allow the word of God to touch those areas that I'm struggling in? Come on. Uh, most of us, when we're struggling, we won't admit that we're struggling. Can I allow the word of God to touch those areas that I'm struggling in? 
For some, your struggle might be I overthink everything. Come on. Somebody can, can admit that sometimes when God put me in position, I'm overthinking. Sometimes your struggle might be I can't be happy for other people. I always find something to say. Come on here. Let's be honest tonight. Uh, it might be I'm always looking what somebody else has and I can't be happy for what God is doing in my life. Can I allow the word of God to touch those areas? Now listen, even though I love God and I know his word, but there are still some areas in my life I have not yet overcame. Come on, let's be honest tonight. There are areas, I don't care how holy you are, I don't care how much word you know, we all still have those areas in our life that we have not overcame yet. And if you haven't, just, just, just keep on living. Those are areas that will pop up. Sometimes there have been areas in my life I thought that I had dealt with those areas, but I found myself reliving some of the stuff I thought I was over. So even though I love God and I love his word, so I still can struggle. The Bible says every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord ponders the heart. So let me tell you something. I don't care how right you think you are. It takes God to expose those areas. You see, see, no one wants to admit that they're struggling because we have this image. Most of us are trying to uphold that in image. And I want to say this tonight. You can fool people, but you cannot fool God. God knows you, and he knows those areas that you're struggling in. And let me say this. God cannot deal with those areas till you can admit you're struggling. So again, most of us are trying to hold this image up. We don't want people to know that we're struggling. And I'm going to tell you, we all struggle at some time. It takes the word of God. We have to allow the word to touch those areas. And, then, and when the word of God touched those areas, then we can get our deliverance in those areas. So I want to start out by this story. This story starts out by this rich ruler comes to Jesus asking him a question. What must I do that I might have eternal life? And listen what Jesus said. Jesus tells him what he needs to do. He says, don't murder. Don't commit adultery. Don't steal. Don't bear false witness. Honor the mother and father. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. And I love this rich young ruler. This is what he says. He said, all these things I have kept from a youth. See, he said, all these things, I've done that. I don't steal. I don't, I don't commit adultery. I don't do this. I don't do that. And that's how a lot of us do God. We tell him what we don't do. But, 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 but he says, Jesus said this, and I love this, I, I got to make sure I take my time. Say, Jesus said, one more thing, one more thing that's needed right now. Even though you don't steal, you don't commit adultery, even though you don't bear false witness, you honor your mother and father, you love your neighbor as you love yourself. Jesus tells him, one more thing is needed. Sell all you got and follow me. And the Bible says he left. In a bad condition. Somebody say a bad condition. Jesus did this to test him. And let me tell you, Jesus will allow things and he'll put us in position to see, can we deal with that one thing? What is that one thing that Jesus is asking of you? I want you to think about that right now. Yeah, you don't steal. Okay. Yeah, you love your neighbor like you love yourself. But what is that one thing that Jesus is telling you? We need to deal with that one thing. So again, uh, Jesus is not concerned. Listen at this. Jesus is not concerned about what's coming out of your mouth. Jesus is more concerned what's coming out of your heart. Somebody say amen. I felt that in my spirit. Jesus is not concerned about what's coming out of your mouth, he is concerned about what's coming out of your heart. Because the Bible says that out of the heart flows the issues of life. So again, what's really in your heart? 
Jesus is saying you are connected to things. I'm trying to get you connected to the kingdom. And that's how a lot of us, when Jesus asks us to let go of things, we are so tied up to things. And Jesus wants us to let go of the thing so he can connect us with the kingdom. I am trying to shift, Jesus said, I'm trying to shift your focus from a worldly to a kingdom. And most of us are stuck right there. Come on. Think about that one thing. Worldly passes away, but kingdom lasts forever. If you can get your heart right, oh, then you can get your mouth right. Because where your heart is, is where your treasure is. Come on here. So I got to make sure I, I, I'm dealing with my heart. In other words, Jesus is saying, I'm trying to bring you down so I can elevate you up. Now, I know I'm going a little fast, but I, I want this to digest. I want to really teach this tonight. What is that one thing? That Jesus wants you to let go. See, he's trying to, to, to give you everlasting life. He's trying to ch change something uh, in your life. He's trying to take you from just existing to really uh, doing kingdom work. I'm trying to give you ever, an everlasting exchange. So again, what is that one thing that we've got to deal with? And most of the time, we don't let the word deal with that one thing. It's easy to jump and shout about things that you're not going through. But when God exposes that area in your life, can you allow the word to deal with that one thing that's really needed? Because the Bible says that he left with his head down. It wasn't that he a, wasn't a good man. We are good. We have good people, but you can be good in a bad condition. He left in a bad condition. So I, I want to give you these five points and I can close this out tonight because I feel excited tonight. A good man in a, in a bad condition. And I talk to people all the time that are good people, but they're in bad conditions. What makes your condition bad is when you don't allow the word of God. To touch that area. When you refuse, when God tells you to let something go and you're still trying to hold on, that can bring you in a bad condition. So I'm going to give you five things that the rich man did not understand. Five things. And I, I believe this will be a blessing to you. Uh, the rich man did not understand if your heart is not for the things of God, then everything that God asks you to do will be hard. Woo! Hallelujah. And that's some revelation now. He failed to realize that he had a heart condition. And I'm going to say that one more time. Uh, you got to make sure you put this on your paper. If your heart is not for the things of God, then everything that God asks you to do will be hard. Mm. See, the rich man failed to realize that because he was still connected to his possessions. And when God said, let it go, he didn't want to let it go because that's what made him. And it was hard because see, he wasn't worried about the things of God. He was more worried about his image and his prestige. Number two, what the rich man felt, that, the rich man failed to understand, I must be willing to separate myself from worldly thinking in exchange for heavenly thoughts. Oh, Man, God gave me that there. That hit me there. I must be willing to separate myself from worldly thinking in exchange for heavenly thoughts. That's why the scripture says, let this, man be, be, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So again, anything that comes against the word of God, I've got to attack it. Amen. Because God don't want me to be thinking worldly. He wants me to be thinking kingdom. Come on. God wants the kingdom to come alive up in you. <laughs> that was number two. Number three, the rich man failed to realize I must be willing to obey the word of God no matter what it costs me. Come on, he's going to bless you tonight. Number three, I must be willing 
to obey the word of God, no matter what it costs. The Bible says obedience is better than your sacrifice. I don't care how much you have sacrificed, obedience is better than your sacrifice. So I must be willing to obey the word of God, no matter what it costs. And let me say this, sometimes obeying the word of God costs something. Somebody ought to say amen right there. Somebody say, it costs something. It costs something. Sometimes it can cost you a relationship. Sometimes it can cause you, uh, 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 you can think that uh, God wants to do it this way and God shut a door and tell you to go another way. And trust me, it can cause you some, 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 some thoughts that you thought you were going this direction and God turned you into a whole other direction. It causes something to obey the word of God. No matter what it costs me, it could cost me, uh, it might cost me a job. Amen. Might cost me a relationship. Amen. It might cost me a lot of time. Because God, he has already ordered my steps. And what I want to do, I want to be in alignment with his word. I don't want to get to a place and start leaning to my own understanding. So again, I must be willing to obey the word of God no matter what it costs. Amen. It's a price you've got to pay. Amen. Number four, I must be willing to become lesser so he can make me greater. See, the rich man failed to realize that God was trying to make him greater. See, I must be willing to become lesser so he can make me greater. Sometimes what we call success is not success. He failed to realize that money doesn't solve the problem. I want somebody to put that on. Money does not solve the problem. <laughs> Your money can keep you in the condition. And I'm not giving you a pass saying that you, you shouldn't have money. No. It's the love of money. It's when you do anything for it. God was trying to make his name great, and he did not understand the concept of it. And that's what I want. I don't want to make my name great. And sometimes we think we do it, and when you do it, guess what? It won't last. Only what you do for Christ is the only thing that's going to stand in the end. So again, i got to be willing to become the lesser so he can make me the greater. See, God wants to do some great things in our life, but he wants to get the glory for what he's doing. That's why I love when Abraham said, uh, when they was trying to give him uh, money and stuff, he said, I won't take nothing from you unless you say you made me great. And I want somebody to type in, God is going to make my name great because my name is connected to his name. And anytime God does something in my life, I'm going to give him glory and praise. And when I give him glory and praise, that makes his name great. And the more I make his name great, my name becomes great because my name is attached to his name. Somebody say amen. Amen, amen. Number five, he failed to realize that whatever you lend to the Lord, that, that, that he would repay you more than you had before. See, the rich man failed to realize this. This was just a test for him because he, 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 was, he was known by what he was trying to, to do in life. But God wanted to make his name great because you do know a great name is chosen over great riches. So again tonight, I, I just want to make sure I settle this in, settle this in your heart. Uh, God wants us to know that he is doing some great things in all of our lives. But we got to be intended to what he's doing. He wants to make your name great. And sometimes before he makes your name great, you got to come down. He exalt you in due season. And sometimes we want to be exalted when it's not the right season. He settled for earthly riches versus eternal wealth which is everlasting life. So this, this story, it just really, it, it just touched me in so, in so many ways. And if you keep on reading in, in Matthew 19, 29, 30, the text concludes. And it says, and 
anyone that has forsaken houses or brethren or sisters or fathers or mothers or wives or children or land for my name's sake shall receive a hundredfold and shall inherit eternal life. Listen, tonight, God is trying to take us somewhere. But let me tell you something. We've got to allow this word to expose those areas of weaknesses in our life. We've got to make sure that God deals with those things that we are uncertain about. Listen, I don't want to be good, a good man in a bad condition. I'm in a bad condition when I'm holding on to things and God is trying to give me the kingdom. Come on. God wants to do some things so great in all of our lives, but we've got to be willing to allow the word of God to deal with those areas. What is that one thing? What is that one area that, that you keep coming up short? What is that one area that God has been trying to deal with? You won't just let go and let God. Come on. I don't just want to be smart and intelligent. I want to allow God to touch those areas. And what good does it do me when men giving me praises and telling me how wonderful I am? And God said, I don't even know you. We're not connected. And sometimes I believe what, 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 what throws us off is sometimes God and us are not on the same page. This rich man is teaching us something. He, he, he was proud to say he did this, 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 and this, and this. When you start telling God about what you've been doing, and I don't do this, I'm not like that person, I do this, I do that, that. And God said, well, let, let me tell you that area that we need to deal with. When he told him to sell everything, let it all go. Give it to the poor. And see, the scripture says, what I lend to the poor, I lend to God. God was trying to do an exchange for him. He was trying to, to give him a new way of thinking, a new way of looking at things. What is that one thing that you need to let go so God can bring the kingdom operating in your life? And the Bible says that when Jesus told him to sell everything and give it to Paul, he left there upset with his head down. A good man in a bad condition. He was more tied to his image. And how many of us are so tied up in our image? We're trying to impress everybody with what we're doing. And God say, you ain't done the one thing I asked you to do. Come on. N now that you are in a place that God has raised you up and to you know uh, to much is given, much is required. You're in a place now. You're living this life. You, you're blessed. You've got money in the bank. You've got cars. You've got image. People know your name. But God is saying, can I deal with that area? Because what I want to do, it ain't just about you. I don't want you having nothing that's so, so that you're holding on to is controlling your life. And the Bible says he left upset because he had a lot of wealth. Can you give God everything? He don't just want some of it. He wants everything. Ooh, I wish I was on Sunday morning. I would to tear it up right now. I said, he wants it all. Are, are we willing to give him our all? What are we doing? God is trying to take us somewhere. But before he can take us there, he got to deal with some issues in our lives. He got to deal with some proclivities in our lives. He got to deal with some overthinking. He got to deal with that attitude. He's got to deal with all those, that one thing that's keeping the kingdom from operating in your life. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Because, you know, the Holy Ghost ain't going to make you do nothing. You got to yield your will to his will. What is that one thing? And tonight, we're not jumping and we're not shouting tonight. Because we want things that make us feel good. But those things that need to be done, we don't want to deal with that. How long have you been like that? And when Jesus shows up, he's going to always show you what, needs to, what you need to let go of. 
And he left that in a bad condition. Is it possible that we come to church on a Sunday uh, we come and we hear a word of God and God exposed that area and we leave there and we say stuff like that. This sermon wasn't for me. Because we don't want to deal with that area. See, we got to take the whole loaf. We can't just cherry pick it. And what we've been doing is cherry picking. And this scripture tells us that when we go to God, He's going to tell us those areas that we need to deal with because he knows where he's taking you. And let me tell you something. He wants to make your name great. He don't want people just to hear your name. He wants people to know that you have a great name. A great name is chosen over great riches. Can you allow God to make your name great? There is more that God is requiring of you. There is more that God wants to do. It ain't the devil that's holding things up. It's you. I can't get no amen there. And when I preach to, to you, I'm preaching to myself. When God spoke to me this morning, he said, I want you to go from expecting to experiencing me. You've been talking about, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this. You've been, you said you got the word. You said you applied the word. Now it's time to see the manifestation. It's time for us to go from expecting to, to experiencing God. Pastor Free, I don't want to do all this preaching. I don't want to experience God when I go to heaven. I want to experience him down here on earth. He said he's looking for somebody he can show himself strong in, then here am I. But let me tell you something. God is not going to use you just, just the way you want to be. You're going to have to deal with some issues. You're going to have to deal with some stuff inside of you. You want to deal with the way you think. You want to get rid of your excuses. You want to stop your line. You want to humble yourself. You want to turn your TV off. You want to get a prayer life. He can, he can tell you the areas. But most of us, we don't want to spend time so he can tell us. It's just like my, my, one of my friends, he used to tell me, man, don't tell me the truth. Don't tell me the truth. I said, what you mean? He said, don't tell me what God, 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 God said about that because if you tell me, then God can hold me responsible for it. <laughs> and I told him, I said, let me tell you something. If I don't say it, he'll make a dog tell it to you. He'll make a chicken crow it out to you. Let me tell you something. God will expose those areas. So again, tonight, I just wanted to come on here tonight and just really talk about this tonight because I'm telling you, I want more. I'm asking God for more. Then God say, allow me to do more. Is your heart for the things of God? And let me tell you something. If your heart is not for the things of God, guess what? It's going to be hard. It's going to be hard. It's going to be hard to do the things of God because if your heart are not other things of God, if your heart are other things of, of the world, if you're more worried about your image, you're more worried about what people say about you, come on, it's going to be hard. But when your, your heart is for the things of God, it's easy. Whatever, whatever it is, God, just, just tell me whatever it is. And again, God wants to do some things. Don't be like this rich man. Don't have a God moment and leave a God moment in a bad condition. Man, I mean, if you keep on reading, it says a hundredfold. I mean, I mean, he was already rich. I, I believe, I believe that God wanted to make him even richer. He wanted to make his name great. That when we read the Bible, we're still talking about how great this rich man. He missed his opportunity. And some of us, if we don't get this thing right, we're going to miss our opportunity. God wants you to be great. He wants them to, to, to know who you are. Because when you know who you are, then you're going to talk about who he is. He wants you to testify. 
He wants you to stand and, and people are there and they're looking at how, how did this happen? He wants you to be that witness and you can stand up and say, God did this thing. So again, tonight, what is that one thing? Are you a good woman in a bad condition? Are you a good man in a bad condition? Come on, let's deal with that condition. Come on. God wants to give you your diagnosis. Your diagnosis is to let go of everything. If it's keeping me from pleasing you, I'm letting it go. If it's causing me to get out of your will, I'm letting it go. If it's not going to bring glory and honor to you, I'm going to let it go. Search me, God. Search me. If you find anything that shouldn't be, take it out, God. Take it out of me. So again, you know, where's your appetite? Come on. Are you hungry for the things of God? Because the more of God, there's the less of you. That means you got to be dying. So again, again, I just wanted to come on tonight and just kind of share that with you tonight. So again, God wants to do some great things in all of our lives. Come on, let's change our focus. Let's focus more on him. Let's focus on the word. And I'm telling you, in these 66 books, this Bible can change your life forever. Come on. This Bible can be peace in the midst of a storm. This Bible can be companionship when you're feeling lonely. If you just pick it up. Come on, this Bible, uh, it, it, it can direct, it can give you wisdom, it can give you knowledge, it can give you understanding. When people look at your life and they'll say, where did you matriculate from? How, how did you know all that? God has some wisdom that will blow people's mind. We have to be willing to let God do it. I wish I could find that rich man. I would grab him and shake him and say, let it go, man. Now we're reading about the opportunity you miss. I wonder what would have happened if you had to say, Jesus, I'm going to do it right now. Because whatever I give to you, I already know the principle. You're going to give me a hundredfold return? Not in the life to come, but in this life. Come on. He was adding, and God was trying to take him to multiplication. And he missed it. And I'm telling you, that one thing can throw you completely off. That one thing can keep you from bringing glory and honor to God. Come on. <laughs> Sometimes you just got to get your last cry out. <laughs> because let me tell you something. The Bible says, how can two or more walk together unless they agree? Sometimes that one thing is you got to be with somebody you can be in agreement with. I know who I am in God. And that's why, you know, when you know who you are, it, it gives you a different kind of confidence. I'm, I hadn't always been able to do this. I was always kind of a shy type person. I mean, I just like to work behind the scenes. But let me tell you something. God will give you some boldness to be able to speak. And let me tell you something. Some people, all they do is talk about it. But when you experience it, it's a whole different ball game. If I had not experienced some things that God told me to let go, I'm talking about, again, this rich man reminds me of something because God would take you all the way down and let people see you go down so he can exalt you in his timing. And I, I'm a witness of that. I'm a witness. You can lose everything, go bankrupt, but if you hold on to God, God can turn that thing around and work it for good. I'm a witness what the devil meant for bad. God can turn that thing around and work it for your good. Come here, rich man. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. You're trying to get uh, uh, some claps on the earth. But God trying to give you a kingdom connection. Men, when they see you doing good, they won't help you. Uh, they'll turn their backs on you. They'll, they'll hate on you. But let me tell you something. When you got the kingdom behind you, you can't be stopped. 
Because God say, listen, they might not help you, but I got the king's heart in my hand and I can turn it to your favor anytime I get ready. So again, don't be a good man. Don't be a good woman. Don't just be good in a bad condition. When Jesus want to deal with that condition, let him deal with the condition. Let him bring you to a, a place where it's peace and love and happiness and joy. Come on, favor over your life. And then when somebody can look at your life, what I'm trying to, what I'm trying to get to, I want people because I'm, I'm going to holler everything I have, everything that I am, you know, it's all because of God. I want them to look at my life and say this one thing. I never saw it done like that before. I hear some preachers, oh, I preached the house down. What a manifestation. Come on. Use a scholar. But what, 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 where's the kingdom at? What are the principles operating in your life? And I'm not knocking that down. All I'm telling you is this here. We try to make it so hard. Jesus is going to tell you that area that you need to work on. Let him work on you. Everybody's got a strategy for this. A strategy. Man, stay in the Bible. Just stay in the Bible. It'll make you brand new. He can change the way you talk. He can even change the way you look. Come on. He can give you wisdom that will, 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 will blow people's mind. So I close with this tonight. I just wanted to make sure that you understand. The word of God is not just for you just to hear it. The word of God is in your life for it to expose those areas. Those weak areas, those proclivities, those things that you're struggling with. It's there to deal with all of that. So, because guess what? He wants your name to be great. And why does he want your name to be great? Because your, your name is connected to his name. He leads me in a path of righteousness for his name's sake. He protects his name. So that's why he got to tell you that area that, that you need to deal with. So again, the rich man missed out. I want somebody to type on here. I'm not going to miss out. I'm not going to miss out. Whatever God tell me to do, I'm going to do that. So again, I, I just this is what he gave me today. And, and, and I tell you, it's just been in my heart all day. I just been reading about this rich man. What an opportunity he had. Boy, he thought he, he thought he had the answer. Oh, I did all that stuff. But he said, yeah, you've done all that stuff. But there's one more thing. I need to disconnect you from your worldly possessions so I can connect you with your kingdom inheritance. And man, he couldn't trust God. He couldn't trust the word. He could not trust the word. He had a word, but he couldn't trust it. Jesus is the word and gave him a word, and he still couldn't trust it. Whoo! Oh, man. Listen, listen. He missed it. He missed it. So again, so tonight, that's what I wanted to share with you tonight. And I believe that can bless somebody. If it didn't bless you, just file it away. One day it'll be able to bless you. Amen. The higher you go in God, let me tell you something. There's more God going to ask you to take off. When people start clapping for you, come on. Get down low on the ground. When people tell you how wonderful you are, hey, tell them ain't nobody wonderful but Jesus when they tell you how great you are, make sure you direct them back to Jesus. So again, he said, I will share my glory with nobody. Again, I just wanted to come on tonight and share this with you tonight. I hope it's been a blessing to you tonight. I've been on fire all day long. And again, I'm telling the palace, hear me, palace of praise. We are not in expectation no more. I decree and declare we are out of expectation. We are in the experiencing God. And I, God told me to sound the alarm experiencing. There are testimonies that's getting ready to come forth. There's miracles that are happening right now. Come on. There's favor being released right now. You just got to get in, in tune with what God is doing. And he's doing a marvelous work and it's marvelous in his eyesight. So allow him to take you from expectation to experiencing his glory. 
So again, I love you so much, and we're going to pray again. I thank you all for coming on tonight. I don't want to keep you long. Again, I thank all the great men and women of God who take our time to hear what I've got to say. And I, I really try to pray and stay connected. And God told me just try to keep the word simple. We've been making it too hard. Just make it simple. Come on. The rich man, that's a, that's a nugget for somebody. That's a principle that somebody can hold on to, can help you advance the kingdom of God. Come on, let go of the earthly stuff. I don't want the earthly, I want the kingdom connection. So again, we're going to pray tonight. Again, don't forget if you want to give, there are ways you can give. We always want to give you if you, you feel like this word has been a blessing to you. We don't charge for the word, but if you want to sow a seed into the kingdom, you can sow a seed. They got cash out, PayPal. They got all these ways you can give. Palace, I want you to keep on paying your tithes, keep on believing God. And I'm telling you, I'm not the only one being blessed. I've been getting some calls and some great testimonies, and that's only the beginning. And again, I've been praying, and God is getting ready to give us the date. He's telling us what to do. We are already in process of getting the building in order for you all to come back in. And we want to make sure that everything is done decent and in order. We got to make sure we got masses. We want to make sure our social distance is going forward. We want to make sure our kids are protected. And we want to make sure that we understand that this is not some hoax. Regardless of what this president is saying, this is not a hoax. People are literally dying from this uh, pandemic right now. You know, I'm, I'm in the funeral home a business and I'm telling you, we are burying people every day that is dying and some of them they they names don't get called out or uh, this and that so don't think it can't happen to you again protect yourself and warning comes before destruction I believe that God made doctors and these doctors have gave us warnings so make sure you're protecting yourself yes the holy ghost can protect you yes he can do all that there just like when the devil told jesus to jump off the rock he said that they should not tempt god either so again make sure you're in that place that you need to be and we'll let you know some are already starting to kind of trickle back in we want to make sure if you're older and you feel like your immune system is not as strong we want you to stay at home and then until we can get everything together we want to make sure the building stays sanitized out when you leave we want to actually go out at different times as you leave out not to be uh gathering up talking so much and touching each other you know so we've got to make sure and then we want to make sure you don't get offended when you come in the building when somebody don't shake your hand when they just give you a bump or they just throw their head up so again we want to make sure that we are using wisdom amen Somebody say amen on that. Again, I love you, and I want to pray again. If you have any needs, make sure you call the church. Uh, you know, if there's anything that we can do, know that your pastor is praying for you. Know your pastor loves you. Know your pastor misses you. And let me tell you something. I cannot wait to see you all. I'm telling you, I might, that's something. Y'all might say, man, something wrong with pastor. He didn't lock the whole church. He won't let nobody leave. I'm telling you, I'm tired of preaching the empty chairs. Amen. So again, and I thank this praise team, everybody, for the great job they're doing. And the cameras are going forth every Sunday. And again, thank God for all of our new people that are connecting to us. We've got people uh, from Jamaica. We've got people from Atlanta. we got people all over that are connecting to our ministry and saying it's been a blessing to them. Thank you for some of the seeds that are coming in from people we don't even know have been a blessing to this ministry. We thank you from the bottom of our hearts. And again, what you make happen for God, he'll make it happen for you. So let's pray. We're going to pray and then we're going to get out of here tonight. And uh, God is going to bless us all. Father, we pray that tonight as we get ready to close this close this prayer out tonight, God, that you would move by your power tonight. I pray that, Father, tonight you would touch tonight. I pray that every area that needs to be touched, allow the word to touch us right now, God. I pray that your healing power, if there be any sick on this airway tonight, I pray in the name of Jesus that your body is healed by the stripes of Jesus Christ. Help us to cast down every imagination that comes against the word of God. So tonight, Father, I ask you, whatever that one thing is that I need to let go of, God, I pray that tonight I let go of it and I let you have your way with it. Father, whatever you desire, I give it to you, God, because everything I have is because of you. So tonight, Father, get our mindsets right tonight 
And Father, give us that hope. That hope is only in you, God. And I know if I put my hope in you, I will never be disappointed. I thank you, Father. I'm not waiting for the victory. I've already got the victory. So tonight, Father, I pray that tonight, let us feel your presence tonight. Let somebody develop that hunger for you tonight. Let somebody on this airway tonight, let somebody say that message touched me in a way. I've been holding on to that one thing, and that one thing is keeping me from being in my right position. So tonight, Father, help us tonight. Change us tonight, Father. Tonight, Father, I come against every excuse for us not being great. We serve a great God. We are your children, so that makes us great. So, Father, whatever area that I need to cut up, cut away, God, help me cut that area away. If I'm watching too much TV, if I'm not using my time wise, if I'm not studying, if I'm not praying enough, God, whatever it might be, God, that's keeping me from connecting with you in the right way, Father, help me expose that area so I can make that area right with you. So tonight, Father, I thank you tonight. Now, Father, help us all, God, to stay focused on what you're doing in this season, God, of our lives. We pray for those who are in, in, in charge right now. We pray even for the White House tonight. Father, I pray that whatever's right, whatever's wrong, you would deal with it, God. I pray, God, even for what we're seeing on TV, uh, we pray for this fraud family. We pray for every family that has lost a son, God. There have been so many of these African-American young men that are dying, God. Father, thank you for exposing it, God. I thank you right now what's done in the dark. You said you would bring it to the light. And, Father, I really believe that you're bringing things to the light right now in the name of Jesus. I pray over our meal barrel. So, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray our meal barrels will never run dry because we have a God who promised to supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory through Christ. So tonight, I have more than enough. I thank you for the favor that's over my life. I speak to every business owner right now, Father. I pray that you get all in the business right now, God. Father, that you give new new strategies, new farmers how to excel in our business right now. Somebody's contemplating a business right now. Father, I thank you, Father. If we build it on you, God, we know it will last forever. So, Father, I thank you for favor. I thank you, Father, for joy tonight. Now, Father, you said the joy of the Lord would be our strength. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you would literally start making people laugh, that you would tickle us with the Holy Ghost, God, because well, there's laughter, God. I thank you, God. There's a healing in laughter, God. And I thank you, Father, as we begin to laugh, God, I think we start to think about the great things that you're doing in our lives. And I think it brings us to a place of laughter, God, a, a place of peace right now. Now, Father, we sign off tonight. As we sign off tonight, Father, meet those needs right now. Every problem, answer the problem, God. You answer, God. We don't want to hear from nobody but you, God. We want to hear you speak to us, God. Give us a one-on-one. -on -one. Give us a face-to-face. -face. Give us a Moses experience, a face-to-face. -face. Speak to us, God, that we we'll know who you are and what you're doing in our lives. Now, Father, we love you. We praise you. It's in the powerful name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Bless the people of God again. Have a wonderful, wonderful evening. Again, I love you so much. Keep praying for your pastor. Amen. Keep calling out my name. I want to make sure I am pleasing to God. I want to be nothing but a servant for God. I'm not trying to be great. I just want to be connected to God. And whatever he decides to do with my life, let him do it. Again, I love you. I love you. I love you. Let's send up some hearts to Jesus right now. And then we're going to close with that hearts. Let's send up some hearts to Jesus. And that's just simply as he hearts go up. I just believe that he'll take the foolish thing to confound the wise. I believe that's letting Jesus know how much we love him, how much we appreciate him, and how much we're anticipating what he's getting ready to do. Remember, we're out of the expectation. We're in the experience now. 
Come on. It's time to experience the things of God. It's time for you to have your own testimony. You can't talk about your mama's testimony. It's time for you to have your own testimony. Come on. God is a great God. He's not short of blessings right now. Again, I love you so much. Have a wonderful night. And remember, keep God first in everything. I love you. Pastor E, I'm out. Have a wonderful, wonderful night.